Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How about yourself? Good, man. What's your name, brother? Travis. Travis. Yep. Travis, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm from Kentucky. I'm 37 years old now. And uh, yeah, I've been out here for four years. Uh, the reason that I'm on the street is because I let my addiction get the best of me a little bit. Once my mom passed about two years ago, I spiraled out of control. And I just kind of quit caring about my well-being a little bit. But I, I could easily turn it around and hopefully still take over my father's business like I should be doing right now. But. Okay. So you do understand that your addiction is, is afflicting you right now? Oh, yes. 100%. It's the only reason that I'm on the street, for real. Okay. So if, if that wasn't, like, uh, holding you back, you'd be living a successful life right now? For sure. Gotcha. How long have you been in Florida? Uh, four years. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before that, you were in Kentucky. Where at in Kentucky? Uh, Louisville. What neighborhood? Uh, off West Fort Road in Springhurst. Okay. Is that on the east side? East side, yep. Okay. So when I came to, to the United States in 1996, yep. I ended up in South Side. What? The South End? South Side, by, uh, Third Street by, yeah. by Churchill Downs? Oh, dude, what? yeah, man. Yes. South Side Drive, man. Taylor, Taylor Boulevard? Oh, yeah, man. Yep. The whole South End. Nice. And um, I went to school in, in uh, off Muhammad Ali. What? On the West End. What? You know, they, in Louisville, they got the whole desegregation thing with the schools. Mm -hmm. So I ended up going to like a mostly black school on the West End. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Heck yeah. So you were in Louisville until recently. Yep. I mean, how I actually, I lived yeah. uh, in Shelbyville and then Louisville. Yeah. Shelbyville's a little bit nicer. Yeah. Uh, a whole lot nicer, I think. Well, the East End's pretty nice. Yeah. Prospect East End, I live yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember growing up looking at like, living in Southside, I remember thinking about like, if one day I can live in St. Matthews, right. I'd be a god. I lived, I lived right outside Cherokee Park. Yeah. Yep. And now I go back to St. Matthews and I'm like, ugh. <laughs> what? St. Matthews is so much fun. I have so much fun every time I go back. Gotcha. Um, All right, so compare Louisville to Bradenton. Uh, well, Louisville is kind of, kind of similar to Bradenton. It's a little grungy, little dirty, little uh, lower class compared to the surrounding areas. But it's it's Kentucky, so everybody like helps out one another and cares about one another a little bit more than the people out here. Everybody out here is kind of for themselves, except for the rare occasion that we find somebody that helps one another but uh in kentucky everybody's friendly like everybody waves at each other driving down the street and talks to each other and it's just a little bit more personal like anytime you meet anybody there gotcha yeah um did you ever have to fight a lot in louisville in the schools uh, a little bit just over girls and stuff just stupid stuff but not, not crazy not crazy yeah yeah all right um how do you i mean comparing those two cities living up there and then living down here which one do you like more personally <laughs> if it was the the location not the people the people up there are way better but the, the location out here is pretty cool just because we got the beaches and like all the cool stuff out here but the people up there make a world of difference so now that you're out here you recognize that your addiction is afflicting you you recognize you have potential oh, um yeah. but this is holding you back Finding the willpower, a program to help you. I mean, do you want to change it? What's yeah. the plan, brother? Okay, so I've I, I have tried to change before, but the programs out here, I found that they're they're a little rough. It's all bunk beds, like four people per room, like two bunk beds in a small room. So four people in a room, and it's just really, it's really uncomfortable. Like living four men in a tiny room, plus like twelve people in a house type thing, like in a t in a small house. And I'm just not used to that unless like it's it's like a jail atmosphere kind of it feels like but uh, I definitely know I need it because that's the only way that I'm gonna be successful because I know that I actually was like a functioning addict for a little while but once my mom passed I I just let I kind of quit caring a little bit and let it spiral out of control but I definitely know that keep keeping using is not the way to how old was your mom when she passed uh 65 okay. had, a, had a heart attack okay yep um tell me a little bit about the jobs and occupations that you've had in the past as far as your work experience uh i've worked construction i've worked factories i've done a little bit of everything uh in louisville i worked for ford uh 
I've done Making expeditions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At the trucks, actually, not yeah. the not the expedition, the, the uh, truck plant. I've been meaning to talk to you, man. That was the worst thing I ever bought. What are you guys doing to that truck? What so. the truck? <laughs> okay, so you must be talking about old trucks when yeah. it had the Triton, the Triton motor. Oh yeah. Oh man. my God, that was the worst motor ever made. Gotcha. The Triton. What do you do at GM? What were you doing there? Uh, I was putting the Not seats. GM, that's Ford. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was yeah. putting the seats into the truck. So I had this crane, and I'd put the seats in the trucks and bolt them to the to the truck. I just had that one job. That was it. It was easy. Gotcha. How much would that pay an hour over there? Uh, I started off at 19 an hour. Dang. Right, and that was a while ago. What? <laughs> yeah. You're not gonna find anything in Branson to pay $19 an hour. What? I don't oh, think man. so, unless it's like highly skilled. I mean, I could do carpet. I mean, I do moving jobs for twenty bucks an hour all day yeah, long. Yeah, right but now. that's brutal physical work. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, what was the rent back in Louisville? Uh, like seven hundred. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, around here, in a bad, <laughs> bad area, what's like the cheapest rent you could possibly find? I actually found a two-bedroom, one bath for eleven hundred. I think so. Yeah. That's the best you're gonna find, probably. So in Kentucky, rents are cheaper. Yep. Jobs pay more. Right. People are friendlier. Right. But you got these beaches and beach vibes down here that just keep us all in poverty. Right. <laughs> I don't know. Plus, my father's out here, so okay. I do got a little family out here. My yeah. grandmother and father. and. But I'm thinking I might want to go back home. <laughs> you are? Yeah. Where do you see yourself in the future? I mean, do you see yourself succumbing to the addiction, or do you see yourself surpassing it? Surpassing it, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Gotcha. I know I could do damn near anything I want. Gotcha. And How did your addiction start? I mean, did, uh, was it messing around with marijuana and then after that, like drinking and then pain and, and all that. And, and it just got to the heavier stuff. Yep. But it all started with recreational activities. Yep. What would you say to somebody that is now starting that process and thinking that it, it doesn't have the potential to lead them out here? Uh, I wouldn't even... I, if I could change, if I could go back, there's nothing that would have got me to start smoking. There's nothing. Yeah. yeah. I think today a lot of people call it recreational. Yeah. And it's for medical purposes. Some people are even argue that it's good for you nowadays. Right. Um, but I've seen with my homeless interviews that it always seems like that is what starts people on the track in the is. streets. It for sure is. It is, man. Yep. Um, well, I really appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to say about yourself? I mean, the struggles. I'm sure you've lived some struggles out here. It is, it is a little rough out here, but people do help you out, and there is, I'm sure, a better life if, if you just stay sober. So, Appreciate your time, bro. All right, thank you, man. All right.